here we are again with the second game out of the Your Destiny Patreon League Finals between Nightbringer and Magnus. And the first game And for intense. those of you... Yeah, no, yeah, no, I just want to say for those of you who just arrived into the game, uh, so we do know that the um, uh, balance of the force is effective, but we chose because we were at the end of the league, so we chose to play with the pre balance of the force rules, so Watto uh, dice cannot be removed by events, um, and that was, of course, changed in balance of the force to not being uh, able to be removed by blue events. Um, the list were sent in already when when the uh, FAQ dropped. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's why we decided this way. All right. So Adam gets to choose the battlefield. Um, and <laughs> last time they didn't get a whole lot in the first game out of the uh, out of the battlefield. Um, <laughs> so if you haven't watched the first game, go back and watch that one, and then. Um, if you have watched the first game, you'll know that uh, Manus, he won the first game in a very, very intense uh, uh, last round yeah. uh, where he actually ended up winning, like many games with uh, with Afrodex, are uh, one of the, uh, 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 the Climate Disruption Array. Yeah. Um, bad roll here from Adam, finding a two disrupt sign and blank on the Watto. Um, I think he will just resolve the disrupt. That's something he does. Yeah, but the thing is that now, um, unless he has a, um, um, unless he doesn't have a droid in hand, he should probably play one of his droids now, either the BT one or the triple zero. He's, he's thinking um, about playing mind extraction. Uh, he has climate disruption array, uh, dangerous maneuver, modular frame, and by any means. So, okay. He he hovered about he's hovering over mind extraction so yeah okay that would be so he ah he's playing mind extraction yeah. on Mother Talson yeah wow interesting and now he's he's probably focusing what tambour we had some focus changes <laughs> in the mm -hmm. last game mm -hmm. um, he's probably clear now which one the thing is um it would have actually been interesting if he had played it on Watto right. Because Watto loses both his power action and ah, he loses yeah. the ability not yeah, to be just, not to have his yeah. dice removed. Yeah. Um, so I think that that would probably have been a stronger play right now because that would really put a hard dent in the uh, yeah. in the resource generation machine. That's so true, Klaus. You're smart. <laughs> All right, so there's uh, enough money for delve into absolutely nothing. <laughs> he has an umbrella hover tank in his hand, and that's not really worth delving. No. Um, so he chooses to ignore the mind extraction, just activates Taos, and just tries to get as much out of this round as possible. Yeah. I think also that um, in this particular round, um, that Adam is aware that he has a really poor hand, actually. The, vandal uh, so, the vandalize is nice in this matchup. Yeah, yeah, but, sure. Um, Considering uh, Magnus' hand, it's not really <laughs> something that will go off this round. <laughs> Do you think he would use uh, use it on the uh, uh, the climate disruption array? No. Uh, mm, if he plays it in the first round, mm -hmm. I mm. think yes. Yeah, yeah. But now he doesn't have any resource, so that sort of uh, that's not going to be be an issue. All right, uh, here's the Sentinel. He's trying to see if he can draw into mitigation, um, but there's not a lot of mitigation that can be used, actually. Um, it, it, yeah, he opts not to, to use it. You see his hand? It was... No, uh, no, no, I it don't see it. was electromagnetic impulse. <laughs> so. Well, that's going to get handy later. Let's see. Yeah. Is, he, is he really discarding the Delve? Yeah, he's discarding the Delve here. He wants to find more resources. Uh, he finds, well, he can net two resource, but he can flip it to a plus two. So if he does have mitigation in hand, now is the time to use it to remove the um, uh, the Talzin focus. Ooh. Nah, he doesn't have uh, have any mitigation. Um, that's, uh, it's tough. No. So he's using his focus to focus into a resource. Okay. Interesting. He yeah, so that's going to get into a plus and two. two resources. Yeah, I am also a bit in doubt why he opted for the one resource. He has three shields, of course, so he's really sort of bunking up for next term, uh, next term, next uh, next round. 
So, uh, so he's netting uh, the four resources here. Uh, and Afra deck probably wins the, let's say, the late game. So it's mm -hmm. maybe it's a good choice to go for defense here. Yeah, maybe. Okay, that Umbrian hover tank could hurt a lot if he can find those uh, specials, those yeah. specials. Mm -hmm. He probably finds a resource like he did. No, no, that was actually a special. Yeah, <laughs> no way to remove it. All right, so he Except just uh, he, yeah, he just puts two shields on the sentinel, one shield on uh, on Grievous, or the other way around. Yeah. He just accepts that he takes the special to the face. Yeah, um, six damage. That's actually okay. Yeah, so he just takes uh, one damage on uh, one damage on the sentinel and removes all the shields. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. And Nightbringer dealt six damage for four resources now. So yeah. Let's yeah. see what the roll in the the roll in brings. Yeah, the second one. If he finds another special, then uh, that's going to be a good good round for him. Nightbringer does not want to reroll here. He does want to keep the witch magic and the vandalize, right? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so well, that's a resource. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. That's that's yeah. his, his signature move, rolling a resource <laughs> with the hover tank. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it really has been. Uh, so um, uh, he's passing here. All right, he wants okay. to see if he's pitching to reroll, yeah. and now he's of course claiming he's passing again. Okay. Uh, is it because he wants to play something? He was. Why? Uh, he uh, Magnus was waiting for probably in Entourage to come and play and then play by any means to stop the die. Okay. Mm. Mm. Huh. But you're not sure. Yeah, that that, I, I think I think that was a very poor choice because okay. if he had had an Entourage in hand, he would have played that using what Tambor's ability. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that any player would opt for an Umbran Hover Tank over an Entourage. Uh, so I think that he he probably should have seen that one coming. Mm. Uh, it could have been I'd, a delve into a planetary. But yeah, but <laughs> then that, that would have required that he had two delves in hand. He already discarded one delve. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just, uh, want, that I, just I just want to uh, be on Magnus' side here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there comes the entourage that he was afraid of. Now he can use his by any means. Yeah. Uh, to remove that die. Yeah. So he picks up his second entourage here, um, shuffles his deck, uh, shows the entourage, rolls the entourage in, finds the two indirect damage. Mm -hmm. I think that he's fine with the two indirect damage, isn't absolutely, he? Yeah, absolutely. Because he wants to remove the two resource side if he finds it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, right now, that's probably as good as it gets, right? Um, so using here, ah, so he hasn't drawn any of the triple zeros or the BT1, so he's opting for a stab droid here and playing a, um, a climate disruption array which won him the game last game. So, um, and he has a probe, maybe a probe and an electromagnetic impulse. Ooh, a uh, probe could be nasty. Yeah. He has the best defense, vandalize, and witch magic. Yeah. Ugh. And that best defense is probably not so good in this matchup, actually. Would if he's probing... Would you, would you play here, the, the probe? Would you wait? Uh, I'll probably wait. Okay. Yeah. He has no resources. I, yeah. Because he's probing from a full hand, right? Yeah. The only card Nightbringer can, could play um, out of Magnuson's view uh, is probe as well. Yeah, but the thing is that he knows that he has an entourage in hand, and that one he's not going to be able to stop. Yeah. Um, so he wants the entourage out, but then, of course, he's going into a hired muscle of Fickle Mercenary instead. Mm -hmm. So he's filling up his hand again. I'm just thinking that the logic here is that that he wants to be able to hit as many yeah. events as possible. But, of course, now he's just redrawing into five cards in his hand. <laughs> uh, ho wait, he's not drawing uh, a card from. No, he's not. Okay. Uh, oh, I think that was an oversight from uh, from Adam. It can't be a deliberate choice not to use the two on entourage. Yes, that hmm. was a mistake. He, yeah, maybe he's still eating a... his pizza. Pizza. 
<laughs> but wasn't it Magnus who he was eating pizza? They were both eating pizza. We okay, <laughs> here's the by any means into the uh, two uh, yeah. two resource, right? You don't want him to have two resources. Yes, yes. play that. Uh, yeah. yeah, just get rid of that one. Yes. Yeah, there's really not a lot to think of, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and he can draw another card since he deals one indirect to himself. Yeah, exactly. And he... <laughs> and Adam realizes now that he forgot to search his deck. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, <laughs> deck you can commentate. I have to check my children. Sorry. Yeah, that's a pity. All right, uh, so now we have five indirect damage showing. Wait, that's the electromagnetic pulse. We don't see a lot of those played, but in this game, it's been really, really good. And actually, I think that going into uh, looking into the Spark of Hope meta, we'll probably see electromagnetic pulse much more because we're going to see a much heavier vehicle meta. I'm so sure about it. Um, it's going to be quite interesting here. Now he's probing, finding the uh, witch magic, the most important card in that hand would have been vandalized. If you could have find, if you could have snuffed out that vandalized, would have been amazing, right? Three indirect damage here from the entourage. Um, there's a focus showing on the Sentinel Messenger and a blank on the water. He doesn't have any resource, so there's nothing to use the water. So right now, the mother tells and she has the mind extraction on, and he doesn't have any. Uh, um, so he's pro I mean, he's probably going to exhaust her to get rid of the mind extraction. The mind extraction has cost him quite uh, heavily. It's a very, very expensive uh, downgrade to play, but actually against Mother Talson, all for that matter, I would have played it on on, uh, on Watto, but uh, it's actually been pretty good. I think he's got just going to get rid of it there. Uh, now his game is set. Um, so, uh, if Maunus, he can kill off the... Um, um, if he can kill off uh, Watto this round, can he find six damage? Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Now he can find five damage, right? Oof. Uh, I mean, five direct damage. So that's not going to be a kill on Watto. Um, so he, right now, he has the possibility of. The focus is uh, there's four damage possibly. He can also find the resource and then it's five indirect damage instead. Um, but he still has landing duck to uh, reroll a die. So uh, that's why he's passing right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's two indirect damage right there. Uh, taking the two indirect one on water, one on uh, Talson. Uh, then he's passing again. He's going to focus, uh, probably focus that one into a... Okay, no, he's just resolving one at a time. He's afraid. I think he's uh, he's sensing that he has that uh, the best defense in hand, but he can't use the best defense. Oh, of course. He knows, of course, there's the landing dog. There's no best defense uh, options here. Uh, but now he chooses to focus into... No, he's just dealing the damage, just putting the damage here on Talsin. Uh, using the landing duck here to reroll the Watto die, seeing if he can find a resource. That was a discard side. Uh, so he's just basically just going to focus into a one range damage, I assume, and just putting that one range damage into Talsin. He just has to continue. He's already seen one witch magic. Um... That's the Forsaken right there. Blech. Um, yeah, that was actually just like uh, if he had played the Forsaken on the discard side, put one damage into uh, Talzin, and then there's a claim here from Adam. They're resetting the board, going into a uh, board state, going into the next round. Um, <clears throat> so right now, uh, Maunus, he's uh, probably a bit, bit lukewarm on the fact that he didn't find any of his uh, murder droids. He didn't find BT1, he didn't find Triple Zero, and on top of that, um, Adam managed to play both his uh, entourage and he has the Umbran hover tank in play. And now there's going to be a gazillion money here. Uh, but unfortunately, he only has the fickle mercenary in hand. So not a lot of uh, possibility of finding um, or using that resources for a lot. Uh, 
activating the sentinel message, you're finding a blank and uh, finding a modular frame, taking a lot of resources. Uh, he also has a mobilize, um, but it's not really going to amount to much this round because he's just going to be able to take a lot of resources, maybe deal some damage with the Antarash and the Umbrian hover tank. Um, and they're going to put some work in here. Playing a mobilize, <laughs> looking at Adam playing fast, he just wants this round over with so he has something to spend all his resources on. Um, because I think he's assuming that he's going to have a gazillion resources this turn. Um, but it's a round where he doesn't get anything out of what tempo. Um, that's uh, that's a bit of a killer, actually. I mean, he can play, he can use the Fickle Mercenary twice, but that's essentially it, right? Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, uh, um, what do we have? Um, so right now we have uh, still the stab droid out. Uh, he can use the climate disruption array, but he will still take a lot of damage from the entourages. Uh, so it's really important here to keep this round tight. Hidden motive on this one, guessing special. Really? Okay, that's an interesting play. Uh, that's uh, not just an interesting play. I think that's actually a bad play. <laughs> um, the I mean, first of all, this. Oh, okay. uh, huh. Why is he? Why did he guess special? There's just one special on the uh, the Umbran, and and shouldn't he just wait until he does something with it? Uh, did not see the last right. two minutes, but I think uh, you're totally right that it's not a good play. Yeah, and he actually, he then he thought it was a doubt instead. They they are all over the place right now. <laughs> these two players. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's yeah. see here uh, the activation here. Actually, so he has uh, he has an add art in hand, uh, which matching in the best defense. Um, in, in Magnus' hands is by any means arc. Angel, yeah, yeah. A crash landing and a dangerous maneuver. What tambo power action into a fickle mercenary into a discard side? Uh, the fickle mercenary has some really, really good sides uh, with what tempos uh, one, a two, a three range for one, two disrupt side, and a one, um, one discard. Resolving a resource here. Uh, I think he's wondering why he's resolving that resource, what he's going to spend that resource on. Uh, we'll probably see in a second here. Uh, yeah, so he's taking four damage on Afra, uh, two through the shields, um, using here the power action on Grievous, rerolling both the Sentinels. So he's probably going to use the money for if he found the three indirect damage, which he didn't find. Um, Entourage here. Uh, into a oh, <laughs> two <okay>. disrupt side. <laughs> uh, will be removed by any means, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he's going to use the climate disruption array, maybe just to deal. But he's just do, dealing too. Ooh, he's not been lucky with his droid draws either. Yeah, he's using the um, climate disruption array, drawing a card, seeing if he can find a droid maybe to play. Uh, either BT1 or triple zero with Afra. It's a oh, that's two damage. And it's uh, so Magnus draw into a bu bubble shield and um, ah, not did, bad. Did, I, but I, right I, now there's just a lot of direct damage showing. Yeah. Did did uh, Nightbringer use um, the action on the thing to remove it so he can use mother talzin's power action uh, mother talzin's action again yeah yeah yeah. he uh, he got rid of the mind extraction yeah. okay. um all right magnus mm. seems to be quite be far behind He's yeah, he's taken a lot of damage, but they both have taken a lot of damage. But Magnus, I mean, the, those entourages have put in a lot of work. Now he's forced into uh, resolving the shield here. If he can't remove the Mother Talzin die, then he... Ah, okay, so he can rem remove the damage to the bubble shield. So he's crash landing that, putting two damage into the bubble shield. Yeah. Drawing a card. 
Uh, still no triple zero, still no BG ones. The triple zero here would have been really, really powerful, uh, in particular with the double uh, double uh, action on the uh, um, disruption. He, he yeah, so he's the BT1, but, uh, okay, but he doesn't have any resources right now, so he'll need to pitch yeah. to reroll. Yeah. And he still has that fickle mercenary coming in, and he just lost his by any means. Oh, yeah, but he, he also showed that he had a uh, dangerous maneuver here. Mm -hmm. So he's using the dangerous maneuver, moving one damage to Grievous, one damage to the uh, bubble shield, uh, removing the bubble shield in the process, drawing mm -hmm. a card due to accessibility. Um, I don't know if he's playing with reprograms, but I don't think so. He's probably not playing well connected either. Well connected would also be very dangerous to uh, give an extra card to. Uh, oh, oof. He did not draw a card. Uh, no, no, okay. Um, yeah, that's another mistake right there. Uh, so that's one shield there. Um, put on Afra. That's a pretty decent activation here from the Fickle with the two range damage. Is he changing targets now? Maybe going for the Sentinel Messenger. Yeah, he is going for the Sentinel Messenger. Um, they're just exchanging blows right now. I think that uh, he probably should re-roll the, uh, um, the Sentinel die to see if he can find that resource to be able to utilize uh, Afra's ability. No, okay, he chooses to... Um, Since I was um, telling how not smart Nightbringer is, saying how not smart Nightbringer is, I think that play uh, going for the Sentinel here was great since he knows a sudden impact is incoming. Mm -hmm. So he can yeah, yeah. deal more damage out of that. Exactly. That's really good. Uh, that sudden impact can be nasty on the three indirect damage side on the entourage or the three for one on the um, the fickle mercenary yeah. all right so triple zero played here um the hover tank has a free side as well see if you can find yeah he probably wants to vandalize that triple zero right yes um he kept it because he, he doesn't have anything. He actually hasn't drawn any of his big uh, supports mm -hmm. apart from the entourages. They're also big, but he hasn't drawn into Vader's Fist. He hasn't drawn into a planetary bombardment. Mm -hmm. He hasn't drawn into... Um, <laughs> and Maunus is actually guessing that he's going to vandalize him. <laughs> <laughs> he should immediately, immediately do that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, just to stop it. Especially because Magnus... Uh, talks about it right now. <laughs> All right. Um, and he does not need any resources this round from uh, no, Martin, no. So. But Magnus seems to. Yeah. So he gets it. All right. Uh, can you um, can you entertain our uh, our viewers a bit while I just uh, <laughs> go and uh, take care of some personal business? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we see Nightbringer use the Vandalize on the triple zero, which is a smart and obvious choice. Nightbringer still seems to be in the lead, uh, and now um, Magnus is thinking about playing the Bubble Shield. I think, yeah, it's a good choice since there are a lot of indirect sides showing and he knows oh and he rolls into the free indirect and that's six damage six possible damage ah and he does not did does he he should remove that die he should uh, she should have removed it he could have removed it with crash landing but he probably didn't remember sudden impact it was shown last round and now he loses the sentinel and dr afra that's just a, a really crucial play here and since Magnus is reading the card, he probably did not remember. He did not know about it. I can't see the chat, but um, considering, no, he can't use, that's not indirect. No, can't use it. I will just tell them. Yeah, ah, okay, so they... 
I won't tell them. Okay, so we have uh, two more hit points remaining on Grievous. That's probably game, right? Yeah, and they call the GG. Um, another intense game. Um, the last thing was was a mistake, but it could have happened against uh, with with other dice as well. So thanks for watching, and see you on the next game.